G'day, night time here. I'm uh, out and about today, just driving around, doing nothing in particular, going nowhere specific. At the moment I'm uh, in St Kilda, so I'll give you a bit of a look around if you like. You can see behind me, nice um, lunching area, picnic area. So let's go find a nice shady spot and have some lunch. I found myself a nice shady spot, relatively speaking. I'll give you a bit of a look around at this um, area I'm sitting in. So I apologise for the um, air noise, wind noise. It's really windy here today. As you can see, plenty of palm trees, plenty of palm trees, plenty of palm trees. Not much way of shade. And then there's this. A nice, lovely, shady fig tree right next to the road. Get that. So here's what I'm sitting under for my lunch. What am I having for lunch, you might wonder. Let's rummage through the bag. I have bananas. Some bread rolls. I've already had them on the bread rolls for a drink. Nothing really exciting, just some plain milk. There you go. Smart or white milk, so it's more intelligent than me most likely. Slightly different viewpoint of the uh, palms we saw a moment ago. Right down on the uh, paths and the tree which I was sitting under. I was sitting down there on these benches. So as you can see, lovely shady. We're just walking along and spotted these little beauties, just little pink flowers sprouting up out of the grass. How small are they? There's my foot. Size 12. And now the flowers. Let's try and get a little bit closer. So you can see they're fairly small. Right, here we are, just uh, at the edge of the picnic area, looking out over the bay. Seagulls over here. Let's zoom in quickly. Just mind their own business, doing their seagully things. Tides out, it seems. Building at the end of the pier, jetty. Not entirely sure what it is, but there it is, anyhow. With a close up of the fig tree. Pretty big tree, this one. G'day. I was heading towards Williamstown just for a bit of a look around. I saw a sign saying Science Centre. So I thought I'd go have a look, and here I am. So, let's have a look around and see what's what. Okay, what this one does is to check your peripheral vision. You sit down here and put your chin here. Then you move these um, pyramids around. 
and you can see them in each eye. Or at least uh, this one for your right eye, this one for your left eye. So let's give it a shot and see how good my peripheral vision is. Okay, this is where I start sensing movement. So it's about 88 on that side. And about 87 on that side. hopefully coming up. This exhibit is all about pressure. Um, it's a bed of nails basically. You may think that's not very comfortable, you're going to get all puncture marks and skewered and all sorts of things. Not so. Because the nails are spread over a wide area like the entire body, the weight or the pressure on each individual nail it's not very high, not high enough to puncture your skin. So uh, a child weighs say 50 kilos. So each nail, there's several hundred nails there. So each nail is only one, say one tenth of a kilo pressure. Not very much at all. And I can verify they are very sharp. But because the pressure is evenly distributed over all of them, there's not enough pressure to which to break the skin. So it's they should reach me comfortable, all things told. We're going to try out Newton's cradle next. We're going to try it with one bowl and we'll see what happens. Okay, so when we use one bowl, the bowl, the energy goes from the bowl through the other three to the other side. But what happens if you do two or more? Let's try it out. Okay, that was fairly predictable. There are five balls and you move two. And you go fast and turn the other side. Um, go out. But what about three? If you use three, there are only two left. So what happens? Let's find out. Did you predict that was going to happen? Some of you might not have. What happens is the energy is being transferred from one set of bowls to the other. In the case of the three, the center bowl will continue to go with each group of the other. In this picture, you have to try and work out are the black and orange lines parallel to each other. With this one, you say the colour, not the name. So it's red, blue, orange, purple, orange, blue, green, red. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, green, red, purple, blue, and so on and so forth. How many colours can you see here? There's actually only three. There's pink, white and green.
What's happening here is that the vase object is spinning around. So if you look in the back, looks like a pair of heads talking to each other. Okay, this one is an illusion. There is no square, despite what you may think. Because of the shape of the four corners of these circles, which have got cutouts, you think you see a square, but there isn't actually one there. Is that line a different length to that line? One of Escher's drawings. Okay, with this one, you can see slits going past, and you can see. Uh, small images. Doesn't make much sense now, but if you spin this up a bit faster, you should see a monkey doing flips. Okay, what have we got here? Man or vegetable? One face or two? <laughs> A bit of wordplay. You should be able to read this. Uh, the same word upside down. there we have it. The Science Museum here in Melbourne. Science Works I think it's called. Uh, that was just one half or one third of the entire exhibition that's, that's available here. But unfortunately I ran out of time so I can't go in there. Well I could. But I'd only see a few things before they chuck me out because it's getting close to uh, close up time. No matter. Let's go out and see if we can find anything else to amuse us. Uh, <laughs> see you soon in any case.